welcome all of you, and I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Uh, we are in a series that I've titled, The Divine Reset. This is part two of this series, The Divine Reset. Now, I won't go into great detail, but I'm, I'm having these little moments with God, and I don't know what to call them. I don't know if they're visions. I don't know what they are, but recently I had one. I've had several. And I had one where I saw church buildings all over America. And, and I don't know for what reason I could see in the Metroplex area. I don't think that was the significant part of it. But it was as if I could see people, which I knew were Christians, beginning to emerge out of church as it is right now and as we know it today. My interpretation on that is that God is calling His church to a new place, a good place. And, and really, if you study history, what you will find is that God, at different seasons throughout world history, American history, there are these different moves of God that come about. I think we are potentially on the verge of a very new, fresh move of God in this nation. And I believe worldwide, according to Joel... And I believe the true Christians, those that are really, they're, they're the real deal. They're not just name only. They're, they're wanting to please God. They, they may not have it all together. None of us do. Still working on some things. Am, am I in good company? Preachers still working on some things. Now, that's not a license to be lazy and not get things out that need to be out of our lives. But I believe, without saying much further about it, the true church is about to emerge into and out of, I, I have to say it, out of some of our traditions. By the way, I'm not down on church. I'm not down on anything we've done in the last 20, 30 years. I've been a part of it. I'm for it. I'm all for it. But sometimes God has to get His people ready for the new thing that He is going to do. Now, here are a few opening statements I had. I'll go ahead and read them. They were in last week's message. But it's my belief that if God can get the cooperation of His people, that is, Christians, who really make up the church, it's not just the church generic, but Christians who are the church, if He can get them to cooperate with Him and with the Holy Spirit, He would like to do something fresh and new in and through His people the church. Can you say amen to that? Now I believe that God desires to take us to a place that is much higher for us and a better place, a much better place, a much more effective place uh, personally and as far as reaching out to those around us in, in the days ahead. But folks, listen, God can give a... Here, here's, there's prophecies that, that are in concrete. In, in any... Prophecy about Jesus Christ, His coming, Isaiah talked about it, Isaiah 61. Those are in concrete. Those are not moving, they're not changing, nothing's going to alter them, the time, place, or anything. But there are prophecies that God gives to His people through prophets and through the gift of prophecy in other ways. Those oftentimes are conditional. And I believe what I'm telling you is a conditional prophecy or something God wants to do. Now everybody goes, I was excited, now I'm kind of, ugh. No, don't be that way. Don't be that way. Because God has chosen to, to uh, if you will, in one sense, limit, him, limit Himself to our cooperation. A lot of people don't know. They just think God shows up somewhere. Oh, He just likes those people over there, and they've got a move of God going on. Or He, he likes church on the rock, or He doesn't like this church, or they're blessed and we're not. It, it, a lot of it has to do with the positioning of the people. Now, I, will, I do believe... And I believe we're going to do it. I, I really do. I believe it. I'm not trying to hype you up. I believe that we're going to do some things that are required in order to be available for God to do it. But we're going to have to be, have a, uh, or it will require a willingness to take a fresh look at what it means to be a Christian. Now that's confusing in America. There are people confused. I'm telling you. It will re and by the way, if you don't know what it means to be a Christian, just go start in the book of John or the book of Matthew and just start reading. Then go all the way through the book of Acts. Go through uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians. Just go on all the way. You might want to take a little pause there at Jude. Take a deep breath and then read the book of Revelation. Yeah. 
Now, I could, I could use up a lot of time here. By the way, let me just say this about the book of Revelation. It's not the book of revelations. It's the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. So when you get there, it's all about Jesus. It's all about His victory over all His enemies. Right? But if we're going to be on, on this new thing, I'm going to be, and you are, I'm, I, I just choose to believe that, it will require us to, our willingness to take a fresh look at how we should function as a Christian. Now, if it, now let me tell you something. You need, you need to hear my complete message today if when I say that you go inside, you go, oh gosh, Ugh. you're not where you need to be. You're not where you need to be. And all you need, by the way, I'm going to talk about giving your heart to Christ today. I think some of you just need to rededicate your heart to Christ today. So it's going to require us, us to be willing to, uh, to cooperate with God. By the way, the Holy Spirit will lead the way, and if we'll just follow everything, it really gets exciting. We talk about, well, I remember back in the day when God, and we get so excited. Folks, God never stopped moving. The problem is, we just sometimes don't move with Him. What about the children of Israel? Bless you, sister. What about the children of Israel? God sent them the cloud by day and the fire by night. As long as they followed, things went great. God told him, I'm going to give you some manna. All you need is daily manna. As long as they did that, everything worked out. But how many of you know, like us, people tend to get stubborn. They stop moving with God, and then they get a different direction. And things go really bad. We don't want that. By the way, I believe in many ways, I believe in many ways this congregation is well on its way to being ready for what God wants to do. Now, that doesn't mean we've got it all together. I can assure you. We, we've, we, we've got our areas we need to work on. Right? Now, last time in concluding my message, I left you with these thoughts. And here's what I told you I was going to do in part two. I said, I'm going to show you how God wants every one of you and I'm, I, mean, I mean every one of you, every one of you, and every one of you. How God wants every one of you to be a part of this great reset, this divine reset that is about to happen. Every one of you. So turn every recorder off in your mind today that says, no, not me. In fact, let me just say, here's what else I said. It doesn't matter where you've been. And what you've done, if you want to be a part of this great reset, you can. God's got His arms open wide to every one of us today. And I want to read something to you. I want to read Matthew 20, beginning in verse 1. And this is a parable that God gave me to help all of us understand. And listen, all of you have been serving for 40, 50, 60, 70 years uh, let me say to all of you who are new in the faith or just getting started, or maybe today's going to be your first day, your reward is going to be identical to those that have been uh, working for 60, 70 years. Hallelujah. Glory! That was, uh, that was a weird response. Let me read the parable, Matthew 20, beginning in verse 1. Jesus was a master at telling stories. He said, For the kingdom of heaven... It's like a landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He, he agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. Then verse 3 says, At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. Verse 5, so they went out to work in the vineyard. How many of you know the vineyard represents the harvest field? And at noon and again, 3 o'clock, he did the very same thing. Every time he came back, he would find people not doing things. He said, come on now, I'm hiring you. God's extending his arms to us today, folks. Verse 6 says, at 5 o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. A lot of, a lot of standing around going on. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied in verse 7, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in the vineyard. Verse 8, that evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. 
When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wages. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed that they would receive more, but they too were paid the day's wages or a day's wages. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner, like some of you did when I said, if you've been serving 60, 70 years, those that come in today are going to get the same payment. Don't let that bother you. Verse 12 says, those people worked only one hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. This is, this is the mercy of God saying, I want everybody in on this divine reset. I want everybody in my kingdom. I want them all working together. And when it's all over, I want them to be in heaven with me where I have prepared a beautiful mansion for them. Verse 13 says, He answered one of them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Did you agree to work all day for the usual wages? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay the last worker this, the, the, the same as you. Verse 15, It is against the law for me to do what I want with my... Or it is, is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? And finally, verse 16, so those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. Now, I don't think any true believer would be offended if someone coming into the faith today would give them equal status as they have because they've been serving God a long time. We're just thrilled people come into the faith, amen? Amen. We're excited that they are born again. And I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry to say. When, when everything is done, folks, we're all going to get an equal reward. Amen? Amen? Now, some of you are like that person I heard. Just, just give me a little cabin on the outskirts of heaven and I'll be happy. Not me. I want to be right up by the throne room. When I, was, when I wasn't serving Christ, when I went to rock concerts, I went to some of those crazy things. I, I, would, I wanted to get as close to the action as I could. God's going to arrange heaven in such a way, folks, that we're all going to be in on the action. Amen. So if you want to be a part of this divine reset, you can, but, but, but there's something you need to know first. You, you must know God. You must know God. You must know the God of the Bible. My subtitle today, and this, by the way, for some of you, you'll say, well, that, that's kind of, we know that. Not everybody does. My subtitle is Knowing God. Everybody, if you want to go to heaven, you want to be in on what God's doing, you must know God. You must be in relationship with Him. You can't just say, I'm a Christian and never serve God's purposes, never pray to Him, never, never do anything for Him. If you're truly born again and you let God's Holy Spirit touch you, you're going to want to serve God, you're going to want to pray to Him, you're going to want to do something for Him. And if you never do, you might want to pray to get born again today. Right? So how do you know God? How do I come into a relationship with Him? I'm going to explain this to you. And by the way, you can go straight to our website, cotrequipment.com. Go to the Meet God tab. And just about everything I'm going to say to you is right there. And you can learn how to meet God. But here are the steps that you need to take to become a child of God. Step number one, please know that God loves you. And that He created you to know Him personally. Every one of you. Now, I'm not going to have time to elaborate on every point that I want to make today. God loves you. You may, you may be here and say, no, I'm not very loved. Maybe you've never been loved properly by a man, a, 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 a physical figure, or someone in your life. But I'm telling you, God loves you. God created you. And He wants a relationship with you. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17 says, For God loved the world so much... That He gave His only, His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. Folks, I'm telling you right now, we are living in a period of time where God's arms are open wide to whoever wants to come into the faith and say, I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to be His son. I want to be His daughter. I want to be adopted into His family. 
And then enjoy all the benefits that comes about because of that. But you've got to believe in Him. You, you, have to, uh, I, I, you hear it a lot. There are all kinds of ways to get to heaven. And uh, I'm going to be real nice today. I'm working hard on that. I've heard some very, quote, important people in America say there's multiple ways to get to heaven. No, you've got to come through Jesus. Now, I'm just going to leave that alone. Step number two, here's what, here's what you have to realize if you're going to know God. Man is sinful, and uh, his sins, my sins, your sins, have separated us from God. And we cannot know Him personally or experience His love. Romans 3 and 23 says, For everyone, everyone has sinned, and we all for, fall short of God's glorious standard. God is God, and He has a standard. And the only way we can really uh, get that all squared away is through recognizing that I'm a sinner. Uh, man was created to have fellowship with God, but because of his own self-will, I know no one in Church on the Rock has ever self-willed. I know that. By the way, uh, self-willed in the Bible is described as an attitude What the, 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 the Bible calls is sin. Is it okay to say people are still sinful today? Not some places. How dare you imply that? Well... We are. And it takes a blind person that can't see spiritually that we are, we are sinful. Just <laughs> turn on the news for five minutes. I mean, you know, man ch has chosen to go his own way. And because of that, our fellowship with God has been broken. You hear me make reference to it. It started in the Garden of Eden about a thousand years after Adam and Eve had been in that garden. Satan came and told them all kinds of lies, the same kind of lies that he's telling people today. And because of that, we broke fellowship with God. But here's step number three. God bridged the gulf between Himself and man by sending His Son Jesus to die on a cross for your sins. Think about it. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. I think back, and I, I just my mind kind of flashed back to quite a few years ago when I did not know Christ. In fact, I was, I was raised in this town, and I'm telling you, it was a Saturday evening. I, I distinctly remember coming down this very road right here. This, this was... I don't even know if this building was here then. But I know one thing. I was running from God. And I was afraid. I remember very clearly for whatever reason. Well, I know what it was. There was a, a, a prayer group of people that were praying for me. Oh, God, save, save David. He needs you. He's rotten to the core. Save him. My mother was in that prayer group. I don't know if she was saying that, but. It would have been correct. And I remember that very night trying as much as I could. I mean, you know, when you're, under, when you're under the influence of a lot of alcohol and a lot of weed and a lot of other things, and you've been doing other things, I mean, you know, it's hard to stay awake after a while. I was fighting this thing, and I remember it was about 3.30, 3.45 in the morning. I couldn't stay away. I was afraid to die that night. I, I just knew that I knew that I knew if I died that night, I was going straight to hell. I knew it. And nobody was preaching that to me. Nobody was telling me that except the Holy Spirit. And I remember going down this road, and I remember trying to... We used to do that. I, I don't know how many of you remember those days. I don't know if you do that in the city, but... I still go ride country roads. And God has, wow, He has to heal my mind. I'm like, oh, mm, yeah, mm, gosh. I did some things on those country roads. Who was it? Who's the singer? Country Road? John Denver. Move on, Pastor. Aren't you grateful that while we were still sinners, and that's the point, God died for us? 2,000 years before I even had a thought about Christ. In fact, I, I didn't want anything to do with Christians. I thought all Christians were just... Some of them were very nice, and a lot of them were very intelligent. They, they made good grades. I just thought they were nerds. Really? And on Sunday morning when I would drag out of bed, totally, uh, what do you call it when you're... Uh, help me, y'all. Hung over. 
hung over, strung over, I mean everything. I'd get up and I'd try to find some relief on television. That was when you could only get a few channels where we lived. Channel 7, I don't know, you could get a few others if you rotated the antenna just right. I would wake up in desperation looking for some relief and I'm thinking, well, that didn't do any good. I wasted a lot of money. I feel more empty now than I did before then. But let me turn on the TV and dear Lord, I'd turn on one of those preachers all girded up with their suit and their tie. I, I, just, I just thought, I know I'm not supposed to be judgmental. I know I'm supposed to like those preachers, but those are just, they're just weird to me. I'm one of them now. <laughs> And there are people that look at me and say, he's weird. <laughs> you have to have tough skin to be a preacher. Step number four, you must choose to individually accept Jesus Christ as your payment for sin. You have to, it's a choice. And you have to ask Him into your heart. It is your choice. God is not going to twist your arm. He is not going to demand that you do that. That would not be love. God wants you to choose Him willingly out of love because you want Him. And this is where a lot of people get confused about their relationship with God and about things going on in the world. And they wonder, why is a good God allowing this? Because people are making bad choices. It's their choice. Whether it's politics, whether it's this or that, the individual. People have the ability to make choices. And God told Adam and Eve, He said, and by the way, I've studied a little bit about the Garden of Eden. How many of you know they were in Eden, but there was a, and I think Eden was so massive we can't really realize how big it was. There was a garden in Eden. And God gave Adam the garden and He said, tend this garden. He said, now Adam, there's one tree in there. And... I don't want you to mess with that tree. And when you get married to Eve, make sure Eve knows that you guys can't eat out of that tree. Be the leader of your home, Adam. Hello. That got a lot of... That caused a real stir of emotion. Adam was to instruct his wife. And so... Satan comes just like he does to us, and he started whispering, said, basically called God a liar. You notice know, what's happening in our country today, and I'm going to stay off this, I, I am. But Satan is coming and saying, God's not really true, and he's using some of our leaders. That stuff's not true. Even though God said don't do it, even though God said this is an abomination to him, it, it's okay, we, we've come into an enlightened time, and you're better off with these things than you are without them. God, God basically, I mean, you know Satan comes as a deceiver, he, he's very deceptive in how he packages things, but he's a liar. And he comes and he tells us that these things are better for us, but we have to make a choice. And the only way you can make a real legitimate Choice, I think that pleases God, is to know what the Word of God says. But we each have to choose individually to accept Jesus Christ as your payment for sin. And you have to ask Him into your heart. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But to all who believed in Him and accepted Him. There it is. Basically, that is the requirements of becoming a follower of Christ. You believe in Him and you accept Him. You accept who he says he is. He says to those who do that, he gave them the right to become children of God. God said, or Jesus said, I am the way. God, Jesus is God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no one comes to the Father but through me. So you have to determine, is Jesus telling the truth or is he a liar? And I encourage you, rather than listen to all the drama and all the opinions go to the source go to the bible start praying to god i remember we we lived at that time about seven miles north of here and i was sitting i love to sit to this day in rocking chairs and pray i was there this morning praying and rocking many many years ago and there are a few people here who remember that and they remember that porch that i was sitting on and I was praying, oh God, if you are real, reveal yourself to me. Start praying that God reveal himself to you. Stop listening to all, your, all the advice that you get right here. 
I mean, you know, not everything on here is true. AI has probably got a few things to say about Christ. And I doubt it's the truth. I mean, if Satan will give you a little bit of truth. That's, what he, that's basically what he told him. He said, now if you partake of this fruit, you're going to be just like God. You're going to be all-knowing. You're going to know good and you're going to know evil. God did not want Adam and Eve to know evil. He did not want them to know that. So Satan baited them with partial truth. And that's what he does every time he lures you and I into sin or a sinful relationship. Anything that's against his will. He gives us a little bit of truth, entices us. And then when you eat the fruit, whatever it is, then he says, gotcha. And then the rest of your days of your life, he, he, he beats you up. Yeah, you made that decision. Oh, you're a bad person. Yeah, God doesn't love you. Yeah, you're not worthy to be in on this great divine reset. You're too bad. Doesn't he do that? He baits us. You, you know what? You've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and getting baited year after year by the devil. Right? There's a lot of things he will tell us that we're better off with. Um, there's some agencies in our country that will tell you you're better off with them than without. Move on, preacher. <clears throat> Glad I don't have my tie on today. I'd be, I'm at that point I'd be loosening it up. God wants you. It's your choice your choice and maybe there's somebody here you said I did that years ago and boy things really went downhill from there it went really bad I can tell you it wasn't God that caused things to go bad there there is a devil and there are people that uh, allow Satan to use them to harm you and to do things against you Bible says the devil or the thief comes to kill steal, and destroy when something bad goes wrong, and it has for some of you, I believe I'm speaking to some of you, don't blame God. Well, he, 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 he could have stopped it. He could have done a lot of things. He could have made us like robots. He could have taken choice away from us. He could have killed us a long time ago, too. He could have given up on us and said, they're too sinful. Angels, go wipe them all out. He could have done a lot of things. But you've got to be very careful of impugning the character of God when something goes bad. In fact, Jesus said it in John 10.10. 10. He, he identified who he is versus the devil. The thief is the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. All death. And I mean all death. Even of, even of animals. All death. All disease. All destruction comes ultimately from Satan. And he's always trying to bait us and set us up. Well, and, and, and impugn the character of God. What did he do when he came to Job? And when he came, when the sons of God met together and says, Satan came along and God said, what you doing, Job? He said, man, I've been roaming the earth just kind of trying to figure things out here. And he began to impugn the character of God. And he said, God, if you allow certain things to happen to your friend Job, he, he's going to renounce you. Satan impugns the character of God. And it comes in many different forms. Well, you better be careful with this little device these days. Parents, God bless you. God bless you. Get every control mechanism you can get on these things. Hold off as long as you can. But I mean pay attention Get your locator finder. Know exactly where those little darlings are at at every moment of their lives. <clears throat> Wish we'd had a locate, locator finder. <clears throat> the only one we had was a screen with nails on it. And if the nails were bent, you knew they were gone. I'd go out at night, stumbling around. Are the nails still on the screens? What? My wife said we needed nails <laughs> on every window and locks as well. 
Folks, here's the reality. It's a choice. And I want, I want to bring us back to the point I'm really making. God, listen. I believe in the midst of the darkness that's going on in our world, the confusion and chaos in America, God wants to bring a divine reset in the church of America, not to be confused with what some are calling a great reset in the American government. I pray to God that we get a great reset in the American government. We need it. There's no doubt about it, and I'm praying. And, and this reset that I'm talking about, the government and whoever the president is in the next election, they would do well to follow the lead of the church. Because I can tell you we've erred far away from God, and we need a divine reset. Folks, listen, listen, I love you. I'm just going just to touch on this. The church needs it. There are so many ideas, opinions, thoughts, philosophies, doctrines out there. And, and you know God's pretty simple. Things are pretty simple. But boy, we have made them complicated. You know, the children of Israel, God gave them the Ten Commandments. Before it was over, they had created 639 different laws uh, built around and added to the original Ten Commandments. I'm telling you, it's just time for, to simplify things. And that's what God has been working out in this congregation. And it, and it frustrates me every now and then because how many of you know today activity is equated with progress, man? If we got events going, we may not be winning people. We may be wearing everybody out. But bless God, we got something going on. We got an event going every night and every day of the week. Hallelujah! While we're losing our nation. Years ago, God spoke the word simplify to me. And we started a process of simplifying. And now I'm realizing church is not supposed to be complicated. It's not supposed to be burdensome. It's supposed to be designed in such a way everybody can get involved and have benefit from it and not be overburdened by it. So God's calling everybody. You, you may have known the Lord for years and years, but you, 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 need, you need a rededication of your life to God. This is your moment and this is your day. Which brings me to step number five. You can receive Christ right now by faith through praying a simple prayer. And here is this suggested prayer that I'm going to pray. And if you want to receive Christ right now, and this would include rededication, why not? So I'm going to ask... Right now, to all of you who are able, let's all stand to our feet this morning. We're going we're to pray right now. And by the way, I'm not through. In fact, you'll be so thrilled. I've got a third part of this message. God told me to wait till next week. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. All seriousness. You want to become born again? Do you, here's what happens when you say yes to Jesus. He comes and begins to indwell in your heart, in your spirit. You have a spirit. You may not feel very spiritual. You're probably not if you don't have Christ. But when you pray this prayer, and it doesn't matter if you have feelings, it doesn't matter whatever you do, it's not about uh, feelings, it's about faith. And I'm going to ask no movement. Everybody stop moving. Let's just stop where we're at. And Christ will come. And He will indwell your spirit. You will be born again. And then the next thing that happens, at the same time, God will take every sin you ever committed, those that nobody knows about, those that your husband or wife didn't know anything about, and God will cast them into the sea of unforgetfulness. And maybe the whole world knows what you did. He's going to forgive it right now. And He's going to cleanse you of all sin and all unrighteousness. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And He's going to come into your heart. You're going to be born again. You're going to become a new creation. So if you want Christ in your heart, just pray along with me and I encourage you. I know some people get really nervous when they talk about praying out loud. But why don't we just all do it? Even those of you who know Christ... You know you're going to heaven. Pray out very loud with me. And if you want to join along, you pray. And if for some reason you just can't pray out loud, you pray this in your heart, and I believe God will hear it. 
Just say with me, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come on, pray loud. Lord Jesus. Jesus. I want to know you personally. personally. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. sins. I open the door of my heart. And receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And giving me eternal life. Take control of my life. Make me the kind of person that you want me to be. I want to say to everybody who prayed that prayer for the very first time. Or you prayed it as a rededication prayer, congratulations. I think we ought to give God a big hand clap. Come on, how about a little hooping it up in the house? Now, I'm going to help you. uh, uh, You can be seated now. And by the way, there are going to be some people here at the end of this service. I'll be available, always available if you need anything And they'll be willing to pray with you. But one of the things I want you to do is I want you to take one of these What's Your Next Step booklets. And it will tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you how to do that. Uh, We'll get some to you. By the way, some of them, we've got a new one now. It's got a different cover, but it's still the same material. But I say congratulations to you. If you prayed that and you meant that, doesn't matter what you feel or don't. It's about faith. But I can tell you this. You know what they're doing in heaven right now? In heaven, the Bible says heaven has a party every time somebody comes to Christ and accepts Him into their heart. And you're going to begin to sense that difference. You're you're, you're going to want to do some things different uh, in, in the days ahead. Amen. So what is the next step now that I have received Christ? Now that I'm His... What should I do? Well, step number one, here's what I'm going to encourage you to do, and this is going to take some courage. Tell others about the decision that uh, Christ has made in you. Again, there will be people here at the front of this church after this service. You can come and tell them. You want to start confessing Jesus as Lord. Matthew 10, 32 says, Whoever confesses me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. Now, not everybody's going to be excited about the fact that you're a Christian now. I thought all my friends would be excited, even the ones that called themselves Christians while we were at our parties getting drunk. I thought they'd be excited. We used to get together with Christians and get drunk. Why is everybody so quiet? And I would tell them, I recall one of the last times I was at one of those parties, I was talking to one of my dear friends. Guess what happened to me? I became a Christian. Really? Yeah. And I apparently, as maybe I am, I was a little too radical for them. And what they began to do between gulps. Well, I'm a, and they named the type of Christian they were. They named their church. And they said, I think I'm just going to stay there in that. I'm telling you the truth. And then the longer it went, I noticed y- y'all had a you, you you had a y'all had a gathering out at where? I, I I used to get invited to those. Why why, why did I not get invited? Well, I uh, 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 uh. I mean, you know, I believe as Christians, we need to start changing some of those ways when you become a believer. Now, it takes a while sometimes. It's not even safe to say that in church anymore. And then, my best friends didn't call. My fishing buddies quit calling. That's when it got bad. I realized... That to become a Christian, you might not be as popular as you were at one time. There's some people here in this room, I'm not going to point them out, but they, they helped me in that process. And they helped me find Jesus. And I realize you need to start telling people you're born again, but I realize at the same time, not everybody's going to be all excited about that. 
So I'm encouraging you to tell your family and friends. And by the way, some of you probably need to tell so they won't be inviting you to the parties and it won't be a temptation. Hello? Tell a church leader. Folks, listen. I I promise you, I take a shower at least once a week on Saturday night. You can come and talk to me. I won't bite. But you need to start telling people. And then how many of you know one of the primary ways, which I'll talk about this now in just, just a moment, but how many of you know one of the primary ways, biblically, that you make it known that you are now a Christian and you are following Christ? How many of you know what that is? It's water baptism. Now, there's a lot of meaning to water baptism. It, it represents the burial of that old person who you are. And, you, and like Christ, when He went into the grave, he, he was resurrected out of the grave. And that's why we baptize. That's why we immerse you in water. It's like a, a death. And that's the reason we hold some people under a little longer than others till the bubbles start coming up. And, 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 and then we raise them up. Some people require a little more. It is symbolic of your new faith in Christ. I'm now a Christ follower. Did you know in the first century church at one period, for a period of time, if you became a believer and you were water baptized, you wore a white robe for about a week around the city? You know why? You were declaring who you were. I am one of those Christians now. I am a follower of the way. How many of you would do that today? Maybe we could put you, we've got some little white baptism skirts. We could put you in, and you'd get some sandals. You could even, Yamarie would probably let you borrow her walking stick. You could walk around like Moses. I'm a Christian. I probably wouldn't recommend that. Step number two, which I've already mentioned follow Christ in water baptism. How many of you know that Jesus himself set the example? And he went to his cousin John. He said, John, water baptize me. He said, I can't do it. He said, yeah, you've got to do it. We've got to fulfill all righteousness. Do it. Jesus Christ did not need water baptism, but Jesus Christ was, was showing us the way. Acts 10 and 48 says, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. This is a pattern that you see all through the Bible. Jesus set the pattern. You see it all through the Gospels. You see it in the book of Acts. You see it all through the New Testament. People, when they come to Christ, they are baptized in water. Now, Jesus thought it was necessary himself to be baptized. And now that you are his, you will also want to follow his example. Baptism expresses to everyone that you are now a Christian. You know what I'm going to encourage you to do today? If you have prayed to receive Christ or you have rededicated your life to Him or you have never been water baptized, I'm going to encourage you to go immediately to our foyer. We've got places where you can sign up and say, I want to be water baptized. We'll let you know. And we'll get a a baptism set up and ready to go. By the way, believe it or not, we have a baptistry right back here. And at one time, it had a heater on it. I don't know if it still works or not. There have been thousands of people over the 40 years of Church on the Rock. It's got to be in the thousands who have been saved and baptized in this church. It's pretty good, amen? But we don't want to live in the past. We want to live in the future. So be sure and do that. Some people have a phobia about being water baptized. I don't, I mean, it's too embarrassing. Well, now, are you serious about following Christ or not? Are you willing to be embarrassed for Him? If you're ashamed of Him, the Bible says, in this life, He'll be ashamed of you when He comes. So don't be ashamed of Christ. That's your first step of saying, hey, I'm a Christ follower and I'm going to follow Him. Number three, step number three, you need to connect with a Bible-believing church. Hebrews 10 and 24 says, And let us not neglect meeting together. He goes on to say, As is the manner of some. Boy, that is popular today. But as we see the time of Christ coming, He says, You should be together more rather than less. Now again, if something in you goes... That's just a way of illustrating you're disgruntled inside. You do need to hear my next part of this message. 
Right? You need some power in your life. You need, you need some power that will drive out that disgruntled attitude. Folks, Christianity, we're not supposed to be disgruntled to be Christians. Oh, God. Oh, here we go again. Huh? I mean, we, we've stripped this church down where it's so simple. I don't know how you could get much more simple than we are. We worship, pray, meet in groups, come to church. But how many of you know that's biblical? Pray. Try to get people saved, born again. Baptize them. Get together with a, a common group of people. Find a group of people you can be in commonality with and get together and encourage one another. This is a beatdown today in this world, by the way, if you have not noticed. And Christians ought to get together. And he said... He, 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 even as we see the day of Christ drawing near. Now, if I did a show of hands right now, I guarantee you at least 80% to 90% of the hands would go up if I said, do you think we're getting nearer to the return of Christ? I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> Got a few of them sticking their hands up. Well, I can tell you this. In the first century church, they thought he was going to come back immediately. We're about 2,000 years down the road. I think we're getting kind of close. Now, listen... If you're a young person, do not let that depress you. Young people, when, when you say that, they get, I want to live my life and I want to do this and I want... I understand that. But that tells me you do not have a proper grasp on eternity in heaven. If you're married, that means you never have to have another fight or argument about anything with your spouse. If you're not, I mean, you just, you're, you're even freer. You don't have to get mad when you go to Walmart. There are certain situations that will occur in my life where I'm just, I'm not trying to be cute. I just, I get mad. I want to cuss every now and then. I only let you in on those things to let you know I'm as human as some of you are. Some say, I would never cuss. <laughs> you might be tempted to eat too many hamburgers and french fries. We've all got our things. The point is, when you get to heaven, I want young people, listen, you'll be, you'll be perfect in heaven. You won't ever have to work another day in your life. Working for the man is over. Free food. Free flowers. Oh, you want to go on a journey around eternity today? Let's go. Never have another ailment in your body. No sickness, no disease. No dealing with corrupt politicians. Let me tell you, the government of God is going to be great. And the government of God is resting on His shoulders. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Mm. You need to connect with a local church. Don't buy the lie of Satan that comes and whispers just like he did to Eve. You're really going to be better off today if you skip out on church. If you can come, you should come to church. Now, God is not opposed to His people taking vacations. I'm a firm believer in vacations. But you need to be connected. Right? We are the body of Christ. Mm, I think I'll move on from there. Step number four, you need to read the Bible regularly. Psalm 119, verses 105, and I'm almost through now. Read the Bible regularly. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to, my, to guide my feet and a light to my path. Folks, read the Bible. And, 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 and I understand. I, before I was a Christian, I had no interest in the Bible. It's taken me a lot of years to understand the Bible. 
And I'm still learning a lot about the Bible. But I'll tell you what I like about my age and my phase in life. It's like exponential learning. I mean, daily. Exponential understanding. It's like, I mean, it's like a light's going off here. This is going. I understand this. I understand that. And I'm pretty excited about it. I told the Lord this morning, I said, Lord, I guess, though, if we had three lifetimes to live, we still wouldn't know everything about you. But I can tell you I'm a lot further along than I was when I rode this road down here running from God. I'm a lot further along uh, about 45 to 46 years later. I'm further along now, and you'll get there too. Some of you read the Bible, and you, you, you say, well, I don't understand it again. Education was just not my type priority when I was in school. And therefore I cheated. And I wasn't as studious as I need to be. And I spent a lot of time grounded by my parents. Did no good whatsoever. So I've been having to make up a lot of ground. The point I'm making, you can do this. You can learn. You can learn to read. You can learn about God. And you will. You will have to be patient. There will be segments of the Bible you'll read and you'll get through and say, Huh? In fact, I would encourage you to start in the New Testament. Many recommend that when you start reading the Bible, start in the book of John. It's, it's about God's love for humanity and read all the way through the New Testament. You need it. Why? Because the Bible is a road map by which Christians are to live. The Bible speaks to you, guiding, warning, correcting. Can you believe the Word of God will even correct you? Yeah, we need it. And expressing God's love for you. I've got written down here, the book of John is a great place to start. By the way, if you don't have a Bible and you love to physically read, I, I'm a, I'm a, when I get a book, I am a physical book reader. I, I, I've just gotten in three or four new ones this week, and I'm like, oh, how am I going to get them all read? We have Bibles in the foyer. Good Bibles with good commentary, updated Bibles, easy to read. But it, 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 I, I'm also a listener. How many of you learn by listening? Some of you learn by writing. I learn also by listening. Daily, I listen to almost every day, not every single day. I have downloaded the Daily Audio Bible, and I listen to Brian Harden. How many of you listen to the Daily Audio Bible? Quite a few of you. Sandra and Don Dawson... Turn me on to the Daily Audio Bible. I love it. But all of us need a road map, folks. You, you, you want to know why people are going crazy today? No road map. They don't have a clue where they're going. Oh, you want us to protest about this? Let's go. <laughs> they're looking for a cause. They're looking for fulfillment. It's not there. God's Word is a road map. And folks, listen. I, I, I'm really trying to say things in a way that don't just scare people, but... You're going to need the Bible in the days ahead. Get to know the Bible. Do you understand that the Bible says that many people, one of the greatest things Jesus said when you enter into the last days, see to it that nobody deceives you? Deception is at an all-time high. I'd watch and I'd listen and I'd say, how can anyone believe that? How can they defend that? How can they make that their agenda? Because they are deceived. It would do this nation good to put prayer and Bible reading back in the schools. Number five, step number five, pray to God often. Psalm 5 and 3 says, Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and I wait expectantly. Prayer is simply talking to God like you would talk to your friend with respect. Give Him thanks. Tell Him you love Him. And then share what's on your heart. Then listen for Him to respond to your conversation. By the way, if any of you want great information on all of this, you can go through our Finding the Rock series starting Finding the Rock 101. Go all the way through Finding Rock 201. We talk about these habits and how to read your Bible, how to do that, how to, how, what are some Christian things you need to do. You can go all the way through Finding Rock 501. All you have to do is go to the foyer, get the notes, and you don't even have to have the notes. You can go and view these. They're online. cotrquitman.com and go to the FTR 
tab and just go through the Finding the Rock series. Now, I'm going to close with this, folks. The disciples came to Jesus one day and they said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And I'm telling you, Jesus gave us a prayer that is a prayer I pray every single day of my life. And I pray with the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, here's how you should pray. Our Father He's your Father. You may have had a bad Father. He's a good Father. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Now it's our tendency as human beings to run into heaven and say, Hey God, how are you? God, I got, I, I got four sick kids. I can't pay the bills. And, and, and the dog is sick. And my boss is bad at me. Help! Run. That is not prayer. Our Father... You make this a priority in your life and you discipline yourself to spend time with God. I'm telling you, all the sick dogs, all the bosses, everything will get straightened out. Our Father, your Father who's in heaven wants to hear from His children. You are not an annoyance. You are not an irritation to Him. He delights. In fact, when you get up the last minute, run out, throw your clothes on, throw something in your mouth, and head off to work and turn on the radio listening to some goofball talk on some podcast, He goes, Oh, I wanted time with them. Our Father. And notice, our Father. You can't pray selfishly. My Daddy. Hey, Daddy, and just pray about me. It's a family. Hallowed be your name. Worship Him. Find something to be thankful for. God, thank you that I could get up today. Man, I thank God for my coffee. I'm not serious. I mean, I get... I, I mean, you know what a Keurig is. You know the little pods are. I don't have to sit there and... How many was that? Let me hear one more. And then it blew. All I do is I stick my little pod in, close the lid, yawn, push the button, and it's done. We are so blessed in America. Stop complaining and just give Him praise. Sure, it's hard at work. Yeah, people are mean today, grouchy and ungrateful. But he's not that way. Spend some time giving your Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed his name. Give him some praise. And then you pray. I'm almost through. Some of you are doing this. I see you back there. Boy, you better be glad I didn't go into part three. (laughs) You are blessed. I'm sitting here preaching the first few words, and the Lord said, don't do part three. And I'm like, no, we're going to do part three. And then what do you do next? You surrender your will to God. Your kingdom come and your will be done in earth. Theologians tell us that God primarily, first and foremost, meant the us. You, you do know you're a lot of earth, right? Do you know you're about three quarters dirt? Now, I'm, I'm not being silly. And about one quarter water? For sure. That makes mud. Lord, your kingdom come, your rulership. God, I'm surrendering my will to you today. I've got all these plans, God, but I'm surrendering to you. And then you come to the part where you can start petitioning God. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. I'm convinced as long as there's night and day, earth, sunshine, this earth, I don't care what's going on, God's going to see to it that His children have bread, have provision. God, you give us our daily bread. And Lord, forgive us of our debts. I don't know about you, but I need to be forgiven. I I do some dumb things every now and then. I just, just, every now and then, I I lose it. I just throw a wall-eyed fit. And I'm I'm really trying to not do that. You used to do a lot of other things. And I'm not justifying it. But I tell you, I feel, I feel awful when I do something that grieves the Holy Spirit. 
But every day you've got a chance to start again. You don't even have to wait till the next day. Father, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And that's conditional. I hate to say this because I'm sure I'll be challenged on it. I'm not even going to say it. I just don't want unforgiveness in my heart for not one single person on this earth. I mean, you know, Satan's going to always try to bait you. He's always baiting you, always trying to set you up. So you'll be angry, so you'll be bitter. So you'll commit scandalon. The Greek word is the trap. But you pray every day, Lord, forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And you sit there and you say, you know what? God has forgiven me of everything, every day. And he expects me to forgive others. And he will enable you to do that with those rascals that are being used by the devil to upset you. And I don't want to see any husbands and wives going like this. Did you hear that? <clears throat> Folks, listen. And then you come to that part where you commit to follow Christ. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You're saying, God, I, I, I want you to lead me in the pathway that's not... And if temptation comes, I'm going to listen to you and you're going to provide a way out and I'm not going to succumb to that temptation. If you start praying that every day when a temptation comes, you're like, I don't have to submit to this. God, where's the pathway, God? And when God opens that door for you to get out of there, get out of there. When He gives you a chance to turn that channel, you turn it. You're committing to turn... To Him and not fall into sin. And ultimately, it's, it's a lifestyle of God as you walk with Him, delivering you from evil. As your days go on, you, you get more free of evil. And that's how you pray. And by the way, did you know you can pray the Lord's Prayer in 26 seconds? If it's one of those days. <laughs> what? You can still pray the Lord's Prayer while you're headed wherever. And then you conclude with, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom. Come on everybody, you're, you're a kingdom citizen. You live in America, but you're a kingdom, the citizen of God. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Ooh, it's God's power that will make you successful and make you overcome. Remember that. And the glory is yours. Hallelujah. Congratulations to everyone who said yes to Jesus. Congratulations to every person who said, I'm coming back today, I'm coming back home, congratulations. Again, if you have never been water baptized, or you feel a need, maybe you were baptized as a child, and you feel a need to be baptized, let us know by going out in the floor, and you can sign up there. I want to pray for you. I'm going to ask those of you who are going to be here at the front today, I'm not sure who that is you're going to be, I want you to go ahead and make your way up here and they, they will be available. Uh, my, my wife and I will be available. I'm going to pray for you. Let's stand now. Lord, thank you so much for loving us. Father, thank you that you created us according to the Bible and we're special to you. Psalm 139 says, When we were in our mother's womb, you were there forming us, making us. In those very first moments, God, you allowed us to be born in this time. And Lord, maybe everything hadn't been perfect. And maybe we have strayed from you and gone our own way. But God, we thank you that you love us. Jesus, thank you for coming, giving your life so that we could be full of God's life. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. Father, I pray for everyone who has given their heart to Christ to return to God, that they will receive the empowering and the fullness of the Holy Spirit now to walk in your fullness. But I pray, last but not least, that every person in this room and within the sound of my voice will know that if they will receive Christ 
every sin they ever committed is forgiven right now. And it's gone from your mind, God. And I pray we will release it as well. Lord, I thank you and I give you praise for all you're doing. Thank you for this new divine reset. We're excited about it. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Folks, if you need prayer today for anything, if you gave your heart to Christ, I want you to come and, be, and let these people know. God bless you. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you next time.